Okay, so. <laughs> Sorry to take a short break. Um, so I'm just going to do that part one and part two. <laughs> or um, whatever part this is, because I think I, I did start this yesterday. Um, so we're reading through Enoch. Um, I was on script nine. Um, we was talking about so I was I and I will, and I went, until I drew, nigh to a wall which is built of crystal, and surrounded by tongues of fire, and it began to affright me. Now the thing about the crystals, crystals particularly um, alchemic, um, as themselves, and they are alchemic as um excuse me they are alchemic as themselves and they are alchemic um, um for what they represent but what they represent actually are what they are so um i'll explain that for instance and i think i explained it before in one of the other videos before when you have the color um it's a representation of something because that color um spectrum um, projects in the way that it projects in the consciousness so when you look into the consciousness there's a color projection and those, those color projections mean something so it's a good time to talk about that um, when you talk about the colors how black is the color of atmosphere um, and it is the beginning of um, the idea the creativity and then blue is the subject that is the it is the creative spirit because it is the creating within the atmosphere. So that is the representations of the color. So that's why we say the lapis lazuli. The lapis lazuli is whatever is being created um, is created with that stone. Okay, so because it's a crystal, because it's a stone, and especially when you talk about crystals, because crystals are a more you know a pattern that's more. You know, crystal patterns are more, uh, what's the word? Precise, you see. Um, and so when you have a stone, that stone is something that holds up over a, a lot of time and over a lot of pressure. And so we say lapis lazuli because that's the idea Um with the stone because the stone is what holds up under pressure something that continues to live and evolve and if you think about living kind of the way people think think about the way that some people think that in order to live forever one has to keep regenerating and you have to keep regenerating youthful you have to keep regenerating if you're regenerating the, the exact same thing you can stay the same way for a very long period of time and so that's what the crystals are their their representations that crystallization is a representation of something living for a very long time and when you talk about lessons and you talk about things that have to do with crystals and alchemy you're talking about something that is evolved that is a continuation of life so a stone is something that continues life and so when you have other things it's easier to invalidate, disprove, or kill them. But stones are not very hard to, I mean, are, are very hard to break. You know, they, they, and then they even form under an immense amount of pressure. And then each color of each stone is a representation of something. Um, some color in the spectrum that is a meaning. And then when you look out in the life, the you know your actual life all those stones are still representations and meanings um, because that's the way they are in life for instance having a blue sky and then think about all the things that are created here so um, and, and having green grass and that being a, um, a color spectrum of yellow and blue you see so you know white being the spectrum that is like the finishing because it is um, it doesn't have it is pushing all color 
it's really the absorption in a way. Um, black is the absorption of all, it seems like, but um, black is the absorption of all color because it is an atmosphere of which one do we create on. And so, um, so those spectrums go in that they are in those spectrums in life and they are those spectrums in the crystals. And the, the amount, as we, as some people know, I know some of us do know already, um, crystals form um, depending on um, the amount of pressure. Um, you know, the color of those crystals, crystals also mean something even within the earth. Um, and they are formed and the color is formed depending on what it's forming out of and the amount of pressure that it's under. So all of those things coincide with alchem with the alchemy. So when he's saying a wall of crystal and he's also saying um, and surrounded by tongues of fire, fire being those things that molecules banging around so much that it's tearing things up around them. Okay? Fire has a lot to do with that too. When you're under a fire, when you're in a, in a spiritual fire, it's the same thing. Um, there could be um, um, through whatever reason, things bumping around um, causing discomfort. Those who hold up under fire are those who are who have the most crystal within them. So that is why we see people, you know, like some people can perceive, like I can do that too. When I look at people, I can see crystals. I can see like the crystal representation of what is in their being. And that crystal representation of what is in their being has to do, um, seeing that tells you how people hold up under pressure, hold up in, in fire. You know, you know, so... Um, um, I think I described it in the last video when he talks about Matthews and it says some will be thrown away in the chase but they will go through that spiritual fire and some will be gathered up like the wheat because those who are gathered up like wheat and continue to be used are those who will be reincarnated and those who will hold up under the fire because some people go under, come under fire and um, it's, it's just like saying um, going through... I think it would be a, a Kabbalah going through a desert or going through something. Some people will, you know, are evil. So they will just do, and I don't want to just say evil, but some people don't hold up. Some people don't hold up. And so those people who don't hold up will be those ones that are thrown away in the chafe. And so, um, and then, um, and what they mean when they say people, they really mean spiritual. You know, it's really spiritual when it talk, talks in Matthews. Because it means those spirits will be thrown away. And what it means when those spirits will be thrown away, it means that those spirits will be understood. Same thing it's saying in Enoch. As those that are not good for life evolution. And they are abominable and not wanted. And therefore, people will not... And that's what it means, too, by saying that they will not be forgiven. Because one should always understand that those spirits are abominable and not good for the evolution of life. It also talks about that in Genesis. When you go back to Genesis or Bereshish, it is talking about um, how the, it won't, the soul won't use, yield its strength. Um, it says different things in you know, Bereshish than it says in Genesis. But in Genesis, it tries to convey that. When it says the soil will not yield its strength. When it's talking about the soil not yielding its strength. It's talking about people who do not continue. People who will fall away or be eliminated from the evolution of life. They will not reincarnate. Their characters will not yield its strength. Because they are um, their process of life. Process of thought. Excuse me are those who are going towards evil and towards lies. Anything that is a lie will not hold up. 
So alchemically, you can see it that way. If something is a lie, a lie will not hold up. It will not yield strength. Something that is a truth will crystallize. Something that is a lie does not hold up and validate under pressure. Especially, you know, in especially under immense pressure. So it will not yield the strength because it won't crystallize, because it won't hold up under pressure. And um, the path of evolution is, uh, is truthful, being truthful um, and being, um, you know, compassionate because we're in a community. So realistically, if you're in a community and you're doing a lot of things that are lies, that are not holding up, that are causing um, premature deaths, a lie will cause premature death. Because things die when they're obsolete, and if something is not obsolete, it should not die. And it may cause the, the machine or whatever that there is um, to not function and to die. So, um, and those who don't make friends with the consciousness, um, they don't last very long. They don't reincarnate. Um, and they don't evolve. Um, and so, too, that making friends with the consciousness is a kind of crystallization. It's a kind of um, um, evolution. And the reason why, too, has, and a lot of that reason why is because you need those beings that are more dimensional. One, to be guided through their spaces. Two, because they connect you and they evolve you and they upgrade you. Um... And then another reason is because they are a part of this consciousness. So they don't want to be poisoned to death by those who are supportive of what poisons them and kills them. So crystallization is something that's very important um, when it comes to um, and, and crystals. And, and what they represent, what they mean, it, it's all alchemical, you know, knowing what those colors mean, understanding the crystallization within those colors and um, what they support. Um, it's, it's an alchemical, that's a part of alchemical writing and alchemical perceiving. And that is the way the consciousness um, um, converses with us. Who can perceive alchemy and write alchemy and and so and and that's the way that we perceive the world and and the way that we um, project onto the world and actuate onto the world and so um, I'm gonna go on to script seven now that I explained that oh that was script nine I'm going on to script ten and I went into the tongues of fire and drew nigh to a large house which was built of crystals and the walls of the house were like a, a excuse me, let me make this bigger tressellated floor made of crystals and its ground was of crystal so now you see how it speaks to you alchemically once I've explained it to you he goes into the fire and through going into the fire, that means he's under pressure. He's he's going, he's into a space to where he's in a place to where something is trying to, you know, he's under, you know, he's going through something. He goes into a crystallized place. Well, that's Enoch. Enoch is that spirit of discipline. So it makes complete sense alchemically for Enoch to do that. That's alchemical speak because embodying the spirit of Enoch, that's what one will do. Um, its ceiling was like the path of the stars and the lightnings and between them were fiery cherubim and their heaven was water okay so we getting to well, I'm really doing some explaining so its ceiling was like the path of the stars now the, the stars are more dimensional beings than we are so much more dimensional I mean I'm in awe of the stars always it uh, seems like because I mean it is really I'm, all, I'm in all of the stars because they're so much bigger and they're tr they're processing so much more than we are and I'm just like to imagine all the things that the stars 
can do to imagine their faces to imagine everything that they're processing is incredible for me and um and they upgrade us they can upgrade us and it's 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 a fantastic thing to inner star understand that the stars speak so in alchemy stars represent enlightenment you know something that is much more enlightened that's why the magi follow the star unto the revolution which is jesus you see so um the wise men and of course the wise men would follow the star because they will follow their own they will follow the enlightenment and their enlightenment will lead them to revolution so okay the ceiling was like uh, the was like the path of the stars so that ceiling is like that path to enlightenment and the lightnings now lightning is speech you know for those of you who do not know when you see that lightning in the sky that is speech that is speech from beings that are more conscious that are more advanced that those beings are speaking and their speech is lightning and it's incredible to know um, and so that lightning is is um, knowledge and between their in between them were fiery cherubim. Now, to think about cherubim, people have always, uh, people are always trying to. Um, I hear a lot of people speculating. Well, I see a lot of videos where people are speculating about cherubim. And of course, people are speculating about cherubim, but the thing about cherubim is each. Um, I want to make sure that. Now they're they're winged because they are um, more dimensional, and they always have um, these different um, faces and these different characteristics. Each of those characteristics that they have is a representation of something alchemic. I'm getting back to the page I was on and I don't really know how I got off of it So excuse me, I'm going to go back to the Book of Enoch. So each of those cherubim, um, there's an alchemic um, um, each thing on those cherubim is an alchemic expression. You know, whether they be wings, or um, um, different different heads means different things, and um, a lot of the alchemy that I explain explain what those different heads are, um, and so whenever you see the cherubim, those are alchemic expressions. Um, and and each expression also is an action, so one should know that um, to know alchemy. Each one of those alchemic expressions are an action or, or a representation of action. And then um, their heaven was water. So water is the flow of things. And so to say that the happiness of them is the flow and that they flow makes a lot of sense. For me, it makes a lot of sense alchemy to say that their um, heaven is the is water. A flaming fire surrounded by surrounded the walls, and its portals blazed with fire. So there's a fire surrounding the walls, and the portals are blazed with fire, which would make sense because this is a place of crystal. This is a house of crystal. And um, going through those fires sometimes um, is, you know, you know, if you go through a fire, 
and you hold up under pressure that's that's crystallization spiritual fire I mean and I entered into the house and it was hot as fire and cold as ice there were no delights of life therein fear covered me and trembled and trembling got hold upon me so that that basically is to say there's discomfort he is uncomfortable it is uncomfortable to go through the fire um, spiritual fire it's very uncomfortable and as I quaked and trembled I fell upon my face and beheld a vision and lo there was a second house greater than the former and the entire portal stood open before me and it was built of flames of fire and in every respect it so excelled in splendor and magnificence and extent that I cannot describe to you its splendor and its extent so this is this is basically the spirituality of Enoch this is alchemical speak for this is Enoch the spirituality of Enoch he is going through this fire and the reason why the the houses are splendid is because part of this fire is what is crystallizing it's what is um, um, I don't want to say testing the spirit because if you go through a spiritual fire it's real I mean it's real it's hard to go through that I've gone through a spiritual fire and that becomes the test I don't want to say it is a test but it becomes a test afterward because then you're like okay when you have this crystallization then you you know you understand it and as I quaked and trembled I fell upon my face and beheld a vision and lo there was a okay yeah that's I'm on script 15 and in, okay I'm on script 16 and his floor was was a fire and above it were lightnings and the path of the stars and his ceiling was also flaming fire and I looked and saw therein a lofty throne its appearance was as crystal and the wheels thereof as the shining sun and there was the vision of cherubim and from underneath the throne came streams of flaming fire so that I could not look therein thereon and the great glory sat thereon and his raiment shone more brightly than the sun and was wither whiter than any snow and that whiter than any snow remember the white is the completion that is the integration into all things that's when something is can be integrated into all things you have the completion of the idea and the integration of the idea into all all colors all things none of the angels could enter and could behold his face by reason of magnificence and the glory and no flesh could behold him the flaming fire was around about him and the great fire stood before him and none around could draw nigh him ten thousand times and ten thousand were before him yet he needed no counselor so when you talk about that the the one on the throne that is the completion that is what um the state of the angels don't behold him because the angels are the um they are the series of actions that you go through they are the Qurans so as you go through the angels the angels are to um, I like to say to become him so that is why the angels can't behold him because the angels are what you do to become him and the most holy ones who were nigh to him did not leave by night nor depart from him and until then I had been prostrate on my face trembling and the, and God called to, called me with his own mouth and said to me come hither Enoch and hear my word and so as as like he said he was trembling on his face that's him reciting the names of the angels and those who were the most holy did not depart depart from him it makes a lot of sense and one of the holy ones came to me and waked me and he made me rise up and approach the door and I bowed my face downwards and he answered and said to me and I heard his voice fear not Enoch thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness approach hither and hear my voice see it's all making alchemical sense because this is Enoch becoming 
one of the holy ones came to me okay and um and go say to the watchers of heaven who have sent there who who have sent there to intercede for them you should intercede for men and not men for you okay so this is you know remember enoch is a spirit is a spiritual nature so of course he's going to intercede because he's a spirit of discipline Wherefore, and, and they should not intercede for discipline. That makes sense. Wherefore have ye left the high, holy, and eternal heaven, and lain with women, and defiled yourself with the daughters of men, and taken to yourselves wives, and done like the children of earth, and begotten giants as your sons. So this is basically to say, remember those daughters are the influence, the inspiration, the molding of these people. In, of these spirits and really their spiritual natures that we're talking about when we're, we're saying this and though ye are because this is not an actual man is a spiritual nature the spiritual nature of Enoch and though ye are were holy spiritual living and eternal life you have defiled yourself with the blood of women and have begotten with the blood of flesh and as the children of men have lusted after flesh and the blood of those also do who die and perish so a lot of people, when they talk about blood, they talk about um, blood is the is how life flows. You know, life is the flow of the thing that keeps you going. And so um, it's the same thing when you talk about putting the blood on the door. Um, putting the blood on the door is not a literal thing. Satanists think that's a literal thing. They think that when they wipe blood all over the front doors or the, all over the doors. That it protects them from evil spirits because they don't even understand what they're talking about. Because the reality of that is that they're not going to be attacked by evil spirits because they are evil. So putting the blood on the door is something that connects with them psychologically. But it has nothing to do whatsoever with whether or not they are protected from evil spirits evil spirits ain't bothering them because they're evil why would they go and do something horrible to themselves if anything spirits evil spirits are flowing through them and they're being evoked by those evil spirits so um putting the blood on the door um when you talk about um the hebrews putting their blood on the on their on their doors it has to do with um, having that be their life flow um, to change, to transform the um, Kemet into a different society. You know, they're putting their blood into it. They're, they're putting their life flow into it. And therefore, what they, what is produced from them is not killed. But those who do not do that, um, once the transform, transformation um, takes place, you know, it takes place because the product of what had them doing, what they were doing in order to transform a society is killed. And so that's the first signs of those others who did not do that. Because the Hebrews and Kemet, the Egyptians, are the same people. They're not different people. And when they say the blood of women, that just basically means they're taking on those um, those women. They are becoming um, the embodiment of what they are being influenced to do. Basically, the woman is the influencer, the molder, the creative spirit. And though ye were holy, spiritual, living, and eternal life, ye have defiled. Okay. And so, therefore, because they are doing evil... Um, let's see. And as the children of men have lusted after the flesh and blood as those also do who die and perish. Basically to say, 
those spiritual natures will die and perish because they do not provoke the evolution of life and they do not provoke life they provoke um, premature death and, and you know those sinister things um, which is premature death anyway therefore have I given them wives also that they might impregnate them and beget children by them and thus nothing might be wanting of them on earth but you were formerly spiritual living the eternal life and immortal for all generations of the world which makes sense because Enoch would do that and therefore I have not appointed wives for you for as for the spiritual ones of the heaven in heaven is their dwelling and that's exactly to say what it is that Jesus said those who will go to heaven are those who are from heaven so if you are causing hell then you will not enter into heaven those who cause hell um, are hell the same thing as saying those who cause hell are hell those who cause heaven are heaven um, and now the giants who are produced from the spirits in the flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth and on the earth shall be their dwelling and the reason why they become giants too as they said before the defined before is because they are being put before life those spiritual natures that put life put themselves before life and life evolution evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men from the watchers of their beginning and primal origin they shall be evil spirits on earth and evil spirits shall they be called and the spirits of the giants afflicted oppress destroy attack and do battle and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble they take no food but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses now remember this uh, this will we bring us back to Gilgamesh why was Gilgamesh continuously asked why do you always look withdrawn why do you always look tired why does your, you know, because that's the spiritual nature. Why do you look that way? Well, he looks that way. And then they always point out he's eating the flesh of animals. He's covered in the flesh of animals. Um, and he's falling upon things, murdering things for no reason. And so, and so that's what they mean when they say that. Same thing. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against women because they have proceeded from them from the days of the slaughter and destruction and death of the giants from the souls of those of whose flesh and spirits have gone forth shall destroy without incurring judgments having gone forth shall destroy without incurring judgments thus shall they destroy until the day of the consummation the great judgment of which the age shall be consumed consummated over the watchers and the godless ye shall be wholly consummated in other words, um, basically those who get away with it and continue to really do it will end up having to face a great judgment. Um, or who got away with it for a while. And now as with the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them who had been aforetime in heaven, say to them, you have been in heaven, but all of the mysteries have not yet been revealed to you. And you knew worthless ones and these in the hardness of your hearts you have made known to the women and though these mysteries women and men work much evil on earth say to them therefore you have no let's say harmony because they put, put peace but it really means harmony so basically they're describing who the watchers are at this point because before now they didn't describe who the watchers are so the watchers were those of heavens they're the ones who watch over the earth and there are beings who watch over the earth um, and make sure that the earth is not destroyed and said that all the mysteries um, were not revealed to them and so um, it's but it says that they are they were of heaven and and right now because there's a lot of destruction on the earth and there's a lot of evil on the earth um, they don't have any peace so that tells you something about the watchers okay so that was chapter 5 use my phone and so now we're going on to chapter six taken by angel well 
this is what the heading says, but it probably doesn't have a heading in the script. But this is chapter 6. Angels took and brought me to a place in which those who were there were like flaming fire and they wished they appeared as men. And when they wished they appeared as men. So, when it says angels took me to a place, that means a series of actions done by those people who inhabit the spirit of Enoch or who the spirit of Enoch inhabits, actually. By doing that series of actions, which are angels, by reciting those names, by um, doing those series of actions, it takes them to a place. And a place was like flaming fire, which it would do, because once you start reciting the name of the angels, that's when the demons start attacking. Um, I know for sure, because that's what happened to me. Those who vibrate um, against evil um, are those who call the name of the angels. And those in who um, are reci the recital of the, calling the name of the angels is a recital of the name of the angels unto the greater consciousness. Those of us who recite the name of the angels who have that Quran are vibrating against evil. When we vibrate against evil, that will, that evil starts to vibrate against us. And so when evil starts to vibrate against us, it's like a flaming fire. And then it say it appears as men. Sometimes they appear as men as they wish because those demonic beings that are more dimensional can inhabit men and then those men can come against us too. So we are being attacked um, in the spiritual world by those beings that are more dimensional and we are being attacked by actual men. And, and then really, a lot of times when you're reading um, the alchemy of the text, men mean spiritual natures. And they brought me to the place of darkness and, in, and to a mountain, the point of whose summit reached to heaven. And I saw the places of the luminaries and of the treasuries and of the stars and of the thunder and of the utmost depths where a fiery bow and arrows and their quiver and their fiery sword and all the lightnings. And so that's basically the place that um, I am in, you know, seeing all of these things too. Um, because once you, uh, once you do vibrate against evil and you start going through those spiritual fires, this is, um, you can, be, you can go, come to this place, you know. And they took me to the living waters and to the fire of the west, which receives every setting of the sun. Now remember, it says the living waters, okay, because that is the place where the flow of you is the evolution of life. And that is when you are cultivating life and cultivating the evolution of life. And the summit reached to heaven, which is the place of happiness. And they took me, okay, to living waters and the fire in the west, which receives every setting of the sun. So rise in the east, sets in the west. And I came to a river of fire, in which the fire flows like water and discharges itself into the great sea towards the west. I saw that the great rivers, I saw the great rivers and came to the great river and to the great darkness and went to the place where no flesh walks. I saw the mountains of the darkness in the winter, and the place whence all the waters of the deep flow, and saw the mouths of all the rivers of the earth in the mouth of the deep. I saw the treasuries of all the winds. I saw how he had furnished with them the whole creation and the firm foundations of the earth. So this is basically to say he's perceiving what things are. You know, he's being able, he's having a greater perception. He's in the Ark of the Covenant. He is perceiving what all of these things are. You know, basically to say, I saw the treasuries of the winds. Oh, yeah. And I saw the cornerstone of the earth. I saw the four winds which bear the firmament of the heaven. And I saw how the winds stretch out the vaults of heavens and, and have their station between heaven and earth. These are the pillars of the heaven. I saw the winds in the heavens which turn and bring the circumference of the sun and all the stars to their setting. Excuse me.
this is the point to where he's perceiving what things are because this is all alchemical speak for someone who is cultivating discipline in this space and, and perceiving what things are perceiving alchemy in other words and perceiving the living consciousness I saw the winds of the earth carrying the clouds. I saw the paths of the angels. See the paths of the angels. I saw at the end of the earth the firmament of the heaven above, and I proceeded and saw a place which burns day and night, where there are seven mountains of magnificent stones. The three towards the east, three towards the south, and as far as those towards the east was the colored stone and one of the pearl one of jacinth and those towards the south of red stone i think i don't know if jacinth is green but pearl be the white um the red is the constant so the finishing the constant remember red and white um those are my colors um those are the colors of um my orisha my orisha be shung is shungo so and by the way, that is why Shungo is the most powerful Orisha. Um, I just found that out. I think I said that in another video. Just recently I found that out. But I knew my... Um, I'm going to look up Jacinth and what color stone that is. Oh, it's a reddish... It's a red stone. Yellow, red to brown. Okay. Um, red, red, brown is a stabilizing color. Yellow is one that's close to finishing. Um, and I've got, and, and, and the stones are significant because of what colors make them too. So even the colors that blend in to make the color. Are very significant because that has everything to do with what the stone is about um, I think I'm going to to pause I'm trying to find my place And somehow I haven't found it. But I know I'm not in the right place to find it. So I do apologize. I'm going to pause and then try to find my place. And then I'm going to try to get more comfortable. Um, and take a short break. I keep having to take breaks with these. But at the same time, um, when I come back for the next one, I'm going to sit for a lot longer. And try to go on through um, the Book of Enoch. 